Hello everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 81. I was just tinkering around with the settings on the screen capture a little bit here. I, for a while now, I think basically since I've upgraded to Snow Leopard, the colors have been looked a little washed out and uh, the quality of the screencast hasn't been even very high even though I've barely done anything. Uh, as far as changing the settings. So this week I am changing the settings a little bit, up up the number of colors it was recording or something, and a little bit higher of a frame rate. Let's just see how it goes, huh? The topic this week is Ajaxing a WordPress theme. We're going to use jQuery. So those of you that watch, I think we've done like three things on jQuery already, starting from really, really basic stuff. And I, it kind of almost feels like a fourth edition to that, and that a good maybe fourth edition to any jQuery series would be starting to get into the Ajax capabilities of JavaScript. Ajax, of course, being this technology where you can make a server request on a page and the server will return some information to you and you can update what the web page looks like uh, without needing a page refresh. So you can really take a web application, make it feel more like a desktop application in a lot of ways because of this, the ability of things doing stuff flying around on a page without needing a page refresh just can make a website feel nicer. So we're going to combine that with WordPress just because we work with WordPress a lot around here. I personally work with WordPress a lot and it's just kind of interesting. That's happened to be what I prepared. Um, before we jump into it, I'm going to take a look at what it looks like and you can kind of decide how practical this is and whatever. Uh, uh, I wrote it before thinking of any practical reasons for it really, which sometimes, you know, us nerds, that's kind of what we do. Uh, I'll open this up. You can see that I'm, let me kind of refresh the world here. I'm at themeplayground.digwp.com. Digwp.com being digging into WordPress, which is the book that I wrote with Jeff Starr. You can buy this book on WordPress. Uh, lovely book. We're coming out with a new edition uh, tomorrow, I think we're going to send it out to the printer. So everybody that has previously purchased this book will get an updated PDF. And we're sold out of the print book, so people that uh, didn't get that will have the chance to buy it here soon. So the Theme Playground is part of the Digging Into WordPress site, which is also a blog about WordPress. This is just where we have this uh, a WordPress installation with a variety of themes installed so that you can switch between these themes. There's a drop-down menu here, and we have a number of themes in there. Working on more themes, whatever point is you can come and check out one of these themes that's here let's look at this one first it's called lines and boxes it's pretty much exactly what you're looking at here only you know you, you click over to it and you go to the about page whatever it's kind of based on the look of a wireframe very little design here so if you wanted to use this theme you could use it as is as a very simple theme which you know wouldn't be the worst thing in the world or just use the basic styling that's already set up uh, for for like as a framework for creating uh, a more complex theme along that regard i should mention that there's a blank theme in here too that doesn't have any styling at all pretty much so if you are looking for a base framework theme the blank theme is nice too you can uh, go to that and you can download it right here from the theme playground see hardly any styling at all so that's the look of lines and boxes and then the one that we were on was it was called all ajax that's the point of the screencast it's the same looking theme but now look when i click around to different things the spinner pops up and it loads the content from that page without a page refresh even if i do something like go to a different category or look at a, a, a tag archive or even uh, do a search of some kind it does all of that stuff without any page refreshes needed kind of clever hey hey um so we're going to replicate that I wanted to bring up the, the practicality of all this, like why why do this? Well, for one thing, we're going to teach you how to use jQuery and Ajax a little bit here. And for another thing, it's kind of a, a, a it's not <laughs> on, the, on the other side, on the why do this at all, it's not any necessarily less stressful on the server. But I mean, I don't know, it's kind of got some cool user interface. I don't know, some people might look at this and be like, why? Why do this? I don't know. Uh, so, but the, 
I wrote this before I came up with one of those reasons. And then a week down the road, I had some friends who I do a WordPress site for, and they wanted a whole bunch of changes and whatever. And one of those things was, um, I might as well just show you the practicality of this. One of the one of the real live problem, real world problems that it has solved is these guys wanted a bunch of changes done to their site and one of those changes was they wanted a music player which is here on their website and this music player you could turn on and click and listen to the music and and as as you click around the site not lose not have to restart that music just have that music be continuously playing what they actually asked for was a fixed frame in the footer where this would happen you know and I was like, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know if I could make a framed website anymore. If you ask me to, I don't even know if I remember how to do it. It's such a weird, old kind of bad technology. But their request wasn't bad. Their requests make perfect sense. I want to play this song, and as I explore the rest of the site, I don't want this song to stop playing. So let's start playing the song. Well, normally if I went to a website now and clicked a different link, it would stop. But with this new Ajax theme. It doesn't stop. You can click all around the website, you know, go read a blog post, whatever, and it loads this contact in dynamically without the music stopping playing. So it really did solve kind of a real world problem for us. Lovely, huh? Anyway, let's try and do it. Let's build it. We'll start with lines and boxes, or maybe, I'm not sure how we'll do it. I think, I think I'm just going to go into this Ajax theme that I already have set up in here, throw away the JavaScript that's already been written for it, and kind of write it from scratch. We'll see if we have time to write every line of it. If not, we'll get a little copy and paste heavy and just explain the code as we go. Another interruption. Sorry, folks, but for the first time in a long time, we actually have a sponsor for the CSS Tricks podcast, so please welcome Media Fusion. Media Fusion is a, it's like a video player, but it does a little bit more than that. It actually does a lot more than that. It's also a home for your document, so it's, it's, this, it's this place, it's this thing that you can ultimately end up embedding on your own website that is a home for all your different videos and your different documents, media, in other words. Uh, a particularly compelling feature of this, I think, though, is that you, you, know, you, you bring all these documents together and you give it a nice player so people can jump through and watch different ones of your videos, download different bits of your document, uh, not costing you any bandwidth, which is a nice version, uh, feature. But So you have you know, 10 YouTube videos you put in this thing. People can watch them really easily and, and jump between them really easily. But then you can make a podcast out of those videos. That's a cool feature. You don't have to know anything about podcasting. You can just follow their little thing. So let me log into my account. Uh, that should work. And here's just a kind of default thing. You open up your series, and then you can uh, add things, images, lessons, whatever. Let me... Uh, well, let's take a look at it first. Once you've done this, you get a little iframe code, and you can go and chuck it on your own website. So you're not locked to some Media Fusion website or anything. This is the player that they give me. This is customizable to some degree. And here's one of the videos I added. Boom, here's me playing a video. Um, this is me playing the banjo. Do you know I could play the banjo? I can, kind of. If I wanted to add another video to this, I add a new lesson. I call it, oh, wow, we just we got a cruise here i'll just call it test but i can pop this thing open add a new video to it from any of these popular video services or any video service that provides embed code and add a new video save it and come back and immediately live on my page is the second test you click on that and there's one so i can jump back and forth between these two videos no problem and then i could i you know, if I wanted to make a podcast out of these things, I believe I can come into settings here, set up a few things, upload the photo thing, and submit the podcast to iTunes, meaning, uh oh, I'm beach balling. It's like my hobby recently. Oh, you know what? It's because I, I think I opened up the upload photo thing. God, this is killing me. Every time I open up like an open or save dialog box on my computer, 
if I haven't restarted recently, it can just take forever. Just beach ball, beach ball, beach ball. And I've looked into it a little bit, and I think it has to do with connected hard drives. Although, I don't know. I mean, I have a Drobo connected to it, and that's the only external hard drive. I'm on a time machine, but it doesn't seem like any of these those things would be particularly slow. But I'm not sure. I did find a thread on Apple's forums that kind of related Drobos to having this type of problem. Uh, it almost looks like it froze, but if you just wait, wait, wait. Perfect time, guys. Perfect time to be sitting around and waiting <laughs> right during a podcast. Always something. I might have to force quit this thing. We'll see. The point is Media Fusion. It's a place to gather your documents together, your videos together. You can turn those things into a podcast really easily. Oh, there it goes. Just as I was about to force quit. Check out go uh, uh, startthefusion.com. All right. There's mine. We're going to get looking at this theme. So, like a lot of times I do on this podcast, I'm just going to work live and totally ruin something that somebody might be browsing right now, and then I'll fix it. I have a feeling that not a lot of people browse our little theme playground. It's not exactly something that we advertise all that much, although that's going to change in the future. Boy, now it's having a hard time even downloading this file. I'm having a rough time here, guys. You really, I kind of require on this podcast that the internet and my computer kind of cooperate with me as I do this. I'm just having a rough time of it. I'm just going to go ahead and quit, which will probably, like, I don't know, corrupt the entire internet or something. <sighs> what I plan on doing is opening up this theme live and in effect. Um and looking at that JavaScript briefly, and then we're going to select it all and delete it. And start from scratch writing this Ajaxed theme. Wow, it just won't even connect to my server. Just rough, you guys. I'm going to have a drink after this, I think. It's just... So this is hosted on Media Temple, who... You know, if you guys follow, if you're in the design community, you can hear people just just loving Media Temple. Media Temple, um, in kind of a way, sponsors CSS Tricks because they do host my website for me. So I put a link to them on CSS Tricks. They're very good. CSS Tricks hardly ever goes down. It's quite speedy. They do a pretty good job. Ugh. Theme, playground. Oh my gosh. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Uh, 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 uh. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. They do a great job with CSS tricks. But at the same time, stuff like this happens. I'll tell you what. I think they're overall a good service, though. This is really slow. If it continues to be this slow, I don't think that we're going to... I'm going to have to, like, stop and maybe start drinking now and then come back and finish this podcast later. But I'm not sure that either of us really want that to be the case. This is just... It's unbelievable. <clears throat> all Ajax is the theme that we're going to be working on. Look at it, it's starting to speed up, it feels like. Okay, a bunch of JavaScript. Uh, although, as you can see, I mean, there's only 72 lines here. Not all of this has to do with the Ajaxing thing. So what I'm going to do, of course, is delete it. I have this backed up. Don't worry, folks. It is sitting on my desktop right here, secretly a backup copy of it, so that I can, for one thing, reference it off screen. See my secret off-screen place for this? Yeah. And for another thing, just have a backup when this screws up. So now that I've, I'm going to save this and reload the all Ajax theme, the only repercussion here is that it's going to be called all Ajax, but it's not going to be Ajaxy. It's going to behave just like the lines and boxes theme. So anybody visiting it right now is going to be like, um, I don't really see any Ajax going on here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because it's not in there right now. But we're going to write some. jQuery is already loaded in the theme. If you don't know how to load jQuery into a theme, uh, uh, go to digging into wordpress.com and, and, and search for including jQuery in your WordPress theme. We have a couple different articles on it. But just know that, look, if we get, get source here, We'll look at the source code. 
um, jQuery is already being loaded right here. So we, we, uh, we're we going to write jQuery code knowing that the jQuery library is already loaded. So this first line that I'm writing here is when the DOM is ready, you can start doing stuff. Pretty much all jQuery code is wrapped around this stuff. So how does jQuery's Ajax stuff work? How does that work? Um, it's pretty easy. There's a number of different functions, but one of the ones that we're going to use is load. Um, it kind of does what it says. So first of all, let's get let's get some firebug going here because we're going to use that. Uh, we're going to be dealing with we just this theme happens to be kind of perfect this way because there's this main content area. Everything outside of this main content area is just going to stay the way it is. But this main content area, literally a div with an ID of main content, is going to be the target for these Ajax transactions. Uh, and there's a div inside it called inside, which will probably come up. So if we were to do something like, let's get our hands on this div of main content. Now, I have a feeling we're going to use this a lot. Let's just set up a variable called main content in, and make it equal to that jQuery set. It's called caching a selector. Some people are like, why do you use PHP variables? Well, I you use I use that as a convention when it's a jQuery object. You don't have to use a dollar sign in variables like that. If I was going to use a variable like I, I would just uh, not use a dollar sign. Whatever. What we're going to do here is try and target links that are internal only not external links because you know we have for example a blog roll down here that links out to the codex if i click onto the codex we go to the codex i don't want that to try and load ajax style into my theme for one thing the only way we could really do that is by using an iframe that would be weird uh, uh we'd only are trying to ajax things in our own site and I'm gonna I'm using Ajax and just like a like 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 loading something into a page is the only possible use for Ajax. I guess it it kind of is, but you know, it's kind of a loaded word. So just bear with me. If you hate how I'm using the word Ajax, just I don't know, deal with it, I guess. Uh, let's just do a quick example. So main content. How do you use Ajax in jQuery? Load. Let's do something like load the contact page. into the main content when this page loads. This is terrible. Uh, we can't leave this way this very long, but if we just reload the page here, it's going to reload and put <laughs> the entire contact page of our website in this main content area. So uh, that's a little weird. Uh, what we can do past is just put a space in here and target a specific area. And that's where this inside comes in. I'm going to save that. That's a div with an ID of inside. It's only going to grab um, what, <laughs> what would be this area, just this inside area. So you see how easy that is with jQuery? Look at this one line right here. It basically just does all kinds of magic. Uh, let's go to the home page and watch Firebug kind of do its thing. Uh, we'll open the console and reload the page, and you can see this request happen, hopefully. Mm, quicker. Go faster. Mm. Oh, this is going to be rough. We're both suffering here, folks. It really sucks. Okay. When this page loads, it's going to fire this command, and it's going to make a server request and we can watch the request happen here and you can we'll be able to see it and it'll take you know 20 milliseconds or something and then and then so there'll be a flash of content here or whatever and it's going to drop that in there but we don't want to do this i mean clearly on every page load of the site we don't want to just load the contact page but we are going to end up using that load function in loading pages of the things that people click on and we need to figure out how to target all those things that people could click on that we do want to use this load request on. Those things are internal links as opposed to external. We showed you with the codex things. We need a way to target only internal links. So we're going to set up a new variable. 
we don't really need this I. I'm going to call it internal links. And we're going to make it set to something. But what we're going to need before we do that is the base URL of the site. We'll call it site URL. And we're going to get that by all of them, you know, sites start like this. And then we're going to use top.location.host.toString. Don't worry about that, but what that gives us is this. Well, there it finally went. There's the git request you can see. So we asked it for something, and this is what it responded with. And so you can see that whole, you know, how that request went down. So, okay, we have what our site URL is. So we want to target all links that start with our site URL. That way we'll know that there are internal links. So we're going to make a jQuery set of A, and it's going to, we're going to use attribute selectors like we wrote about very recently on CSS tricks that begin with, which is this upper caret thing, equals, um, okay, so we're going to have these jQuery selectors in those, uh, 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 plus site URL, the variable we just set up, plus, and we'll close out this thing. Mm. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> Let's check it out. So part of the progress, you know, as we're writing this stuff, we can, we can check our own work. Console.log internal links. Well, you know, it's an even easier way to do this. Internal links, let's add a class to it and then check out the DOM and see if those classes have been applied. Add class internal. We need to, I think, get rid of that and make it a comma because we're declaring multiple variables. Yeah, watch us here. Hopefully the interweb will... Behave okay. This about we know is an internal link because it you know it starts with the href to it starts with a, a fully qualified URL here as WordPress tends to make links, and it has a class of internal. Beautiful. Other links also have internal. Let's see if the blog roll links do though. No, they don't. It's you can see this the DOM element I'm on here does not have a class of internal. We have successfully targeted every single internal only link on our site. So what are we going to do with these internal links? We're not just going to add a class. That doesn't matter for us very much. What we want to do is when they are clicked, do something. What do we want to do when they're clicked? Basically, we want to load in where that location is. <laughs> oh, that was a terrible way to explain that. Uh, you know, you know what we want to happen. We want the page to load. What happens when you click a link? You want the page to load. That's what we want to be, have go on here. So the main content area is going to load in something. What is it going to load in? It's, it needs to load in the, the 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 where that link points to. So where does that link point to? Um, it's going to let's figure it out. First of all, we're going to need a variable for URL. So let's just make URL equal to nothing or something. That way it's already declared and we can just use it down here. Uh, we're going to make it, uh, first of all, we know we need to figure out the thing that's been clicked on, which we can normally use this for. Only we're going to use it a bunch of times. So we're going to make, we're going to cache it. So we only need to run that selector once for speed. We're going to need another variable then, L, which we won't, we'll just worry about setting here. So the URL is going to be L. L stands for the link that we just clicked on, and we're going to pull out the href attribute from it. So when you click on a link, it's going to figure out what the href is for that link, and, uh, and, uh, 
that'll be the location that we're going to load. So let's load the URL. There's going to be some issues with this. But maybe we'll, let's just wing it for now. For one thing, though, we know that we already learned about this inside thing. So let's go URL equals URL plus space inside. Remember that part? Let's see how that works. We're going to write this kind of piece by piece, see if it works. Load. Now, this is going to be an internal link. So when I click it, it's going to do something, but it's going to reload the page. And the reason it's reloading the page is because we need to pass the element into the function and then say prevent default. That's going to prevent that click from doing what clicks normally do, which is go to that link. Uh, let's click archives. That didn't work. Why not? <laughs> Ultimately, we're not going to have it do that anyway. Because we kind of want the URL to change. Uh, kind of thinking ahead here, we kind of want the URL to change because we're going to try and support deep linking. Um, God, I'm sorry. I should have maybe prepared a little longer for this. But if those of you who are still with me, bear with me here. What we're going to do with each of these internal links... And when I, when I use that phrase in my head, when I want to do something with each eternal link, well, that let's see, I'm going to use the each function. Function. With each link, I'm going to, what I'm, <laughs> what my goal is here is to put a hashtag in between this and this. And the reason that I'm going to do that will become apparent soon we're gonna set the attribute of its href it already has an href but we're gonna reset it to a hashtag plus the path name of itself What is the result of that? Let's reload the page and take a look at how it's going to mess with the hrefs. Okay, so let's see if that kind of worked or not. It does have the hashtag there just like we wanted. So all these internal links now, uh, they're not going to do anything because the hrefs of them have hashtags in front of them. <laughs> oh, does that make sense? I feel like we're, we're, we're getting in a little deep here, but it's kind of a good thing because that's just what happens with Ajax. We're going to kind of watch what we do on each step. Keep each other in check here. My concern was how, what that href actually looked like. It didn't have a fully qualified URL there all of a sudden. Anyway, we're not going to, we're no longer going to prevent the default functionality now because we want that URL to change when we click. Let's look at now. Just to save some time, and as, as, I, as I feel like we're, we're, we're treading water a little bit here, let's look at the function from the real live functioning version of it. It does the same thing. For each one of them, it ap applies this hashtag in the middle of those links. Then when you click on a link, it okay, what does this line do? It fades in an Ajax spinner. Remember that from earlier in the podcast, the little spinny comes on. Then it animates the, the content of the main the main content area down a bit. So when it you know it fades down as that fader is fading in. So it kind of gives the user some user feedback of what's going on here. 
uh, we set the uh, 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 the element variable to this so that we can use it a bunch of times without rerunning that selector. Now this has to deal with uh, keeping the, the current page uh, uh, selection so that when, when people click on the contact page and an Ajax loads that contact page, the contact page in the navigation will still be highlighted. Uh, so it gives them some feedback that they're of where they currently are. Uh, it, 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 it removes it from everywhere. And then ultimately, it, it's going to add it back in for the current page. So the URL that we're going to, we end up grabbing a substring of where we're trying to get to to, to, to get rid of that hashtag when, when we load. Uh, okay. And then, then we actually do the load which is where we put the current page back on it, we fade out the spinner, and we fade back up the main content area back to one. So it's a lot of lines of code. I was just I was having I was struggling a little bit writing them one by one and explaining each one. It was a little easier to do that way, I think. So you can see what happens when we click on the about page is the URL does go change to something that we can use. Although for some reason nothing's actually happening here. I feel like we missed a variable that was set up or something. We can watch the console to kind of troubleshoot ourselves as we do this. Ajax spinner is not defined. Okay, that makes sense. There's a bunch of variables here that I'm going to grab and paste in here, including ones like the Ajax spinner. What is the Ajax spinner that we referred to down here? It just targets this Ajax loader, which is already in the HTML. I don't want to take too big of a break to go look at it, but there, uh, that just happens to already exist in the theme. Uh, it happens to already exist because... We put it there. <laughs> we grab the column wrap and we append it, which has an ID of Ajax loader, so that when we uh, cache it down here, we're all set. Let's reload now and see how we're doing. Baby steps, baby steps. Not defined. Sometimes on, on, on Media Temple, on this particular grid, grid server, you have to reload twice. I probably should have shift reloaded. There we go. Beautiful. It's taking a little long to reload, but it's doing it. I can go back and forth between the about page and the home page and have it work. It does everything we want it to do, pretty much, except for this navigation thing is screwed up for some reason, isn't it? I think what we got to do here is make sure that that's set by default, but because we're going to be using this Ajax thing, we got to run this line which is if you're on the home page find the find the list item with a class of home and remove it and and make it current page item instead um, when we load the home page then which we'll do here it'll be highlighted like it's supposed to be then when we click about it's still i'm trying to make sure that it gets rid of home and adds it what did we do wrong there hmm? I don't know, because the trick here is, see this line right here? It finds anything with current page item as a class and removes it. And that's exactly what the class of the home should have. So let's reload the page and then we'll drill down to it with Firebug and see, to make sure that it has, it has a class of, oh, it has a class of space current page item. I wonder if that's what's screwing it up. But as you click this, it should remove anything. Oh, it did it. It did it. It just was, whatever, not taking that very well. So as you click back to home, it should change the current navigator. If I, it's, this is currently highlighted. If I, Hopefully you can see that. It has a little bit of a light gray background, and then you click about, and once the about page is loaded, the current navigation is there. Woo! Made it through. Not bad, hey, guys? What is with all this hashtag business up here? Why did we go this route? Well, we went this route because when we reload the page, let's I'll just hit reload right now. It's going to load the home page, not the about page. That's not ideal. We want this to be if you give this link to somebody, uh, however you give links to people, that it will load the about page properly. That's where this line comes in hash. Hash is window location hash. Let's just uh, just for the sake for you guys, let's go console.log. 
cash. Be careful with this console.log business. You leave those in there, they can cause errors in some browsers. But for us, let's go onto the console and reload it and see what that value is. Which I might have to reload twice because that's just how this works. The hash value is number sign slash about slash, which is this. So that's what window dot location dot hash returns to us. That is very useful. We can use that. <clears throat> We're going to do basically very similar to what would happen if you clicked on something. So we're going to check that variable. If hash, if that exists at all, and it won't exist if you're just like loading the home page. There is no hashtag, so that has no value, so none of this will run. We're going to basically do the same thing that we would do with a click. We're going to fade the spinner in. We're going to fade down the main content area. We're going to remove current navigation and 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 figure out what which link has the hashtag in it and add the current navigation to that. Then we're going to figure out what the URL is that we're going to be trying to load. And then in the main content, we're going to load what that URL is. Once that has successfully happened, which is this callback function, we're going to fade out the Ajax spinner and fade back up the main content area. Once that's in there now, let's do a shift refresh on this page with the hashtag. It should load for us automatically the about page. So now we have deep linking. I can send this link to somebody and, and, and it will load the about page properly like it should. And all the rest of this stuff still works. Just lovely. There's something else though. We want Ajax to work when you load the page with a hashtag and we want the Ajax to load when you've clicked on a link, an internal link. But what about search? Search is one of the, you're not doing either of those things. You're submitting a form. Uh, it's not a link. This isn't an internal link. It's 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 happens differently entirely. Uh, if we open up Firebug, let's take a look at the HTML that we are dealing with. Oh. And it's a form with an ID of search form. Uh, this is automatically generated by WordPress when you just use the git search form function. And if I click it and go, it's just going to reload the page and it's going to say no post found or whatever. But we're trying to minimize these page refreshes, right? It just so happens on form elements, there's a function called submit. And we can just watch for that submit event prevent the default action and do basically the same thing that we do with everything else. Okay, so this has got me thinking, do the same thing, do the same thing, do the same thing. This code probably isn't very efficient. There's m many of you out there smarter than me who we're doing things over and over again. We're doing that over, we're doing that. There's a couple subtle differences though, which is why it is the way it is. But generally when you find yourself repeating yourself as I am in this code, there's probably a more efficient way to write it. You know, making these things into functions that you just call instead of doing it. Anyway, when the search form, which is the ID of that form is submitted, you know, fade in the spinner, fade out the main content, remove the current navigation, uh, uh, figure out the URL, which in this case is a special search URL that's specific to Word, WordPress. Uh, <clears throat> load the content from that URL, fade, and then once that's successful, fade out the spinner, fade back up the main content area, and don't do the default action, which is go to that page. So, just about wrapped up here. Let's save it and watch it. I'll shift refresh which is gonna bring us to this same page, but I would think that this should still work. Yeah, okay, so I search for test, and now the search is Ajaxized. Just nice. It does seem a little bit like, oh, this is a lot of work for all this Ajaxing when, when uh, <laughs> I don't know. There isn't a good point for it, but I just showed you with the Boulder site that there is indeed a good point for it sometimes. So I pasted enough uh, the the original code again. Uh, it just has a little bit more Ajax for stuff like 
um, the search form. If the value is search when you click on it, make it nothing. So if I shift refresh this and reload it fresh, it's going to say search in here. And as I click, it goes away. And it didn't go away, did it? Go away. Go away. Oh, there it goes. It just took a second. You know, it's just one of those little jQuery touches when you click the search text, the default text goes away. Just whatever. Uh, the rest of this is specific to this lines and boxes theme. This could be more efficient, but it did Ajax, an entire WordPress theme in 72 lines of jQuery. Not bad. Let me know what you think of this. If you think I'm a joke, if you think <laughs> that you could write this better, please do write it better. But uh, this theme will be available for download soon on diggingintowordpress.com. Uh, it's just a good jumping off point if you wanted to do something like this. You know, have a page where there's no page refreshes. Just briefly, when Google comes to this site, a Google sends a search bot through that they're not going to see these special hashtagized links. You know what I mean? Uh, they are going to see regular links, as far as I know. I'm not a search expert, but but you know it, it doesn't really matter. It's not like you're ruining the links on your site. The slash about page still loads the slash about page. You know the content is still there. <laughs> The links load the right content. The only thing I would worry about a little bit with this technique is that let's say you have a really popular post about lizards and you have this Ajax theme and your URL is something like dollar sign lizards. And that works great for everybody that clicks the link. They come here and it uses the Ajax thing and it loads the lizard's post. But when, when a search bot l loads this site, if it doesn't use JavaScript, it's going to load the content from the home page, which might not be about lizards at all. So this, as it exists right now, may not be the best search engine optimized way of doing things. It does work. The URLs all work. But um, if you have a lot of incoming links to pages like this, um, there's some concerns about that, at least to me. I mean, maybe somebody can explain that better. Anyway, I apologize, folks, for, for, for kind of floundering there in the middle. But I think this is kind of an interesting tactic anyway. And I guess that's just kind of how I roll. More tips and tricks throughout the week at CSSTricks.com. Look at them. I accidentally went to, my, to the WordPress thing instead. Yay, CSS tricks. See you in time. Uh, uh, till next time, folks. See you later. Bye.